What is up guys, Max here, and welcome back to another tutorial. Now, in today's tutorial, we'll be learning how to make this advanced subscribe animation inside of After Effects. In the last tutorial, if you didn't catch it, we made a basic subscribe animation, but this is the advanced one, so we're doing a little bit of extra stuff. Now, before we get started, feel free to download the project files. There is a link down in the description. Just click that, download it. It supports me, supports the channel, and supports more random tutorials. Now, if you don't feel like downloading the uh, project file, feel free to follow the tutorial. You'll still make it. And just to quickly let you know, the fonts we'll be using are Proxima Nova and Den Alternate. So there will be links down in the description where you can find these and download these. If you have Adobe Creative Cloud, you'll have Typekit, which gets you Proxima Nova for free, which is really awesome. And Den Alternate is completely free. So go download them, have some fun. Other than that, you can use your own fonts, it doesn't matter. So I have After Effects here, and we can see this thing comes out, opens up, pops this out, click, boom. And also the text kind of like changes to subscribed. It's kind of blurry because my screen is scaled. But um, yeah, let's 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 go ahead and get started. So um, in your project window, you're going to right click, do new composition. Now that pops up in a dialog box. For me, I do um, 4K compositions but for you um, depending on what you want to do typically HD is fine so our width is going to be 1920 by 1080p um, and our frame rate let's drop that down to 60 frames per second now our duration does not need to be a minute and 48 seconds it can just be 10 seconds long 10 seconds long just like that background colors black totally fine resolution full um, and click OK you can always name your composition to something else it doesn't matter. Um, Comp4 for me works this time. And click OK. Boom. Now the first thing we're going to do is turn on our title and action safe. So click this little button right here and then click title action safe which opens up this cool boxy looking thing here. Now go up to your little tools up here and uh, you're going to click the rectangle. Now if you don't see the rectangle, like maybe it's stuck on polygon, you can just click this, hold down your mouse and then click rectangle tool. And we're just going to drag out a rectangle. Now this can be any size you prefer it doesn't matter um, we drag this out just like that I think yeah that's pretty good right there now mine's a little different right now it's just a stroke a green stroke and an empty no fill because um, I was working on something else today for work but we can fix this real fast so up here in our little I guess you know shape properties we can click the fill we can go ahead and change that to a YouTube red kinda like this reds kinda nice um, and then take the stroke and we don't want a stroke so we'll click the actual stroke you know text on there pops open this dialog box and we'll click the no stroke option right here now right now the anchor point is in the middle of our screen you know which is normally good but we want the anchor point to be in the middle of the shape so what we're gonna do is actually click um, pan behind and click our shape layer one and drag this anchor point to the middle by holding control on our keyboard and it pings it to the middle just like that now we need some text so let's grab our text tool We'll just type out subscribe, and currently my font is wrong, so go to our character window over here, and I'm going to type Proxima Nova Bold. Um, you can use whatever you want, but I'm using Proxima. Now we can scale this font up a little bit and put it in the middle of our little box here but we'll just click the pan behind tool once again and grab the anchor point and put it in the middle of our font hold control to ping it to the middle of the not the not the cube we want the font right there now we can actually highlight this shape and subscribe we can go to our align tool right here and um, do um, align to selection and then click this and then click the middle so they both align perfectly. Now if you don't see, if you can't find your align tools or you can't find your character tools, just go to window and just open them up via this thing right here. Now it's pretty simple, but I always like to cover that kind of stuff just in case you don't know. Um, now let's make sure this subscribe text is actually um, centered with the paragraph. And you'll see why later, a little extra step at the very end. But now it's in the middle like that and that's kind of wrong. We need to put our, our little anchor point back in the middle, hold control. Not in that's it. And then we need to move this back over and actually, you know, align it once again. And we're keeping these all centered up so they look all really nice. Problem now though is since we centered this up, it's off of our little anchor right here for our um, 
our title action safe. So we can highlight both of these and actually just move this over so it aligns perfectly. Use our keyboard to make it perfect, pixel perfect animation, just like that. Now we can start making this thing animate, which is what we want. All right, so first off, we need to make this shape layer do its first animation from the last one. So you can see, not this, not this one, but this one, that it comes out like this, and boom, like that. So that's what we're going to do. So first off, we need to kind of scroll down on our timeline and then click S on our keyboard on the shape layer and keyframe the scale with this little keyframe or stopwatch. Yeah, it's a stopwatch. Click that and then click P on our keyboard and keyframe, not, I click T, click P on our keyboard um, and keyframe the position. And we'll go back in time click S on our keyboard again, or you can click U on your keyboard to show all the keyframes so far, and we need to scale the um, Y axis down to get that squeeze we saw in the beginning. So grab your Y axis and start scaling down, but oh, oh, the entire thing is scaling together. We don't want that. So what we need to do is actually unclick this little chain link constrain proportions button, and it'll let us scale down you know, individually on the side. So we'll scale down the Y axis, just like this, and then go back in our timeline and we'll scale back on the x-axis. X but whoop, another problem, it's scaling from the center. We want it to scale from the left. Because if we saw in our original, it kind of comes out like this. See how it's scaling right here? You can see it's scaling from the kind of left side like that. That's what we want. So what we need to do is finally grab this anchor point um, with our pan behind tool. Let's lock our text so it doesn't bother it. Click the lock tool right there. Grab our pan behind tool, grab this anchor point, and ping it to here. But we got a problem. It's being moved around because of the motion. So let's not do that. Let's actually destroy our position keyframe. And now we can move this over without any problems. So I've got I got rid of the position keyframe and I pinged it to the side right here. Now remember, um, this is kind of a lesson learned. Make sure your anchor point is where you want it before you start putting position keyframes everywhere. Um, that will save you a lot of time in the future. Now, keyframe the position again, and we can go back now and actually scale down the x-axis to zero. Let's just type zero for perfect perfection. OC, original content. <laughs> just like that. And now we can actually take our position and kind of go off frame right here. So it's gonna actually do this right here. So boom, just like that. But we want the actual position to finish right here. So it goes out and then out. And we want it to actually stay here for a second. So we're gonna actually copy this scale right here, Command C and then Command V. So it kind of sits here for a second and then it scales out. So it goes out like that. Maybe it waits a little longer out and then up just like that boom that is pretty cool um, now we need that white part of the animation that comes out so if we look into our old one comes out like this open white comes out with 8k just like that so let's go to comp 4 what we're going to do is actually duplicate, duplicate shape layer 1, command D or control D on your keyboard, depending if you're on Mac or PC, click U on our keyboard, and we're actually going to delete all these keyframes. And then we'll do a new position keyframe right here, position, position, the scale, we don't need the scale, we'll just undo this one, undo the scale, accidental. And then we'll go down our timeline and click V on our keyboard to get our pointer tool. Click our shape. Let's actually um, and move it out some. What we'll do is turn this shape to white and put it under. Let's call this um, sub count shape. And this is like rename this the main shape with weird caps capitalization I don't know why I did that but you know hey it works move your sub count shape under your main shape which now we have that little edge on here that makes it look like it's re being revealed from below 
just like that. But we have a little bit of a problem. It's being shown. It's being shown when the shape is down here, just like that. We want to actually start this white shape on its first keyframe. So just drag the layer back like that so it just appears right there. Goes out like that. Then our mouse is going to come in, however long that takes, and then it's going to be there till here. So commands, uh, copy and paste this keyframe here, and then copy and paste this keyframe here, and then it's going to do the reverse. So it's actually going to disappear there. We can end our shape here, so we can actually hit Alt bracket on this layer to close that layer down. Boom, just like that. And then we can start copying and pasting these keyframes to create the reverse on the animation. So um, Command C, V, or Control C and V. So copy and paste this keyframe. Copy and paste these keyframes. Copy and paste. And then copy and paste these keyframes. And you can take you know the size of these out as much as you want. So boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. So, whoop, whoop, whoop. We need a mouse. Change 8K to whatever. That, that, that. Awesome. It's getting there. It's getting there. Um, now what we need to do is actually have um, a number on here. Right? It's going to be 8K or 9K or whatever you want. Um, so what we're going to do is actually go to our text tool again and type out, let's just type 8K. And let's change the font to something else. Uh, I forget what I used. So den alternate. And you can download that font. There is a link in the description. Instead of using the and let's once highlight this font and instead of changing the color via this, let's actually put a fill on the font. So effect. Let's go to effects and presets window effects and presets. Type fill. And drag a fill onto our font and change it to gray because that's typically what that color is I think and then drop it onto here just like that make sure um, that your font is set to the middle with a line so let's close audio out paragraph in the middle that's fine looks like it's in the center works for me I am happy with that so and what we'll do now is actually take this 8k put it on top of sub count and we will parent 8k to sub count shape so when it moves it just follows it just like that and we'll do the same thing as before we'll close off the layer right here to there and right here to there so alt bracket so it goes out like that and now we need a mouse to jump out here and click on this to start the transition we talked about before so what we'll do is go to Google and we will Google mouse pointer PNG now find whatever you want um, I use the actual finger pointer mouse in here um, download that and once you download that open up your project bin and drag in that file into your project bin now I suggest organize this, organizing this in some way but for today we're just gonna throw this in here so we have our mouse pointer in here I have another one in here too but um, we'll drag it into here Right now it's like huge, so we actually need to make it a lot smaller. And because it has a black outline on it, it's like, you know, the mouse point at the back edge. Let's turn the background off. And actually it's kind of annoying. Let's actually put a solid color in here. So new solid background color. Let's choose like, I don't know, light blue or something to be a nice color we can edit on. Put that on the bottom. Ooh, medium royal blue. And lock the layer. So we have a mouse that comes out here, maybe a little smaller, like that. That's where it's going to end up at, you know, three and a half seconds. So hit P on your keyboard with this layer selected, mouse pointer, keyframe the position, go back in time a little bit, and come out like this, and then go forward in time. It clicks, stays there for a second, keyframe it again, go forward in time, and come off. And maybe we like move this entire bit of keyframes back so it's gonna be like this boom maybe a little faster just like that 
boom, boom. Now you can work on the time and however you like. And that means we can actually probably move this out a little bit. You know, we can stretch everything out. Give it a little more time, make this actually a 10 second animation. Now when it's here, it's gonna click. So let's hit S on our keyboard with the mouse pointer, uh, keyframe the scale, go forward in time, scale it down to, I don't know, 15%, and then scale it back up to its 16%. So highlight that keyframe, copy and paste it over. Ooh, I hit a lot of buttons at once. So copy and paste it over, and it should do a little click, just like that. Let's do a more of a dramatic click, so it's going to be a less of a scale. Not 15%, let's do like 14%. It's a little more dramatic. Click. Awesome. So we got that. Go up. That. That. Click. Boom. And as soon as it clicks, it's going to change the 8K to a different number. So what we're going to do is actually Command-D, or Control-D, duplicate this 8K. We're going to drag the layer back for 8K when it clicks, drag a new layer out for the new number, and just retype it to something else. So it's, just, it's literally just a layer change inside the composition. So when it goes out, click, just like that. Cool, now that we got that out of the way, we need to, when this clicks, that the subscribe um, actually, you know, the, the subscribed comes out now. So what we're going to do is actually unlock our subscribe finally, and we're going to duplicate it. So Command D, or Control D on your keyboard, um, double click this and just type D. We'll move this D to the end of the layer, just like that. And once we move the D down to the end, we're going to highlight both of the layers, and we are going to keyframe, the, or we're going we're gonna to highlight subscribe, click P on our keyboard, and keyframe the position. This is the original position, um, where it started out, in the center of our subscribe button. Now, once it clicks, it'll go down in our timeline a little bit. We'll move it over, hold shift on your keyboard, and the D is actually going to be on the end of it now. So let's zoom out and make sure that looks like it's in the center. Looks good to me. And we will zoom back in. Click U on our keyboard for the D. Or click P on our keyboard for the D and keyframe that position. So it'll be like that. We actually want to move the D over a little bit. Let's say like right there. Just like that. Click T on our keyboard to open up the opacity. Let's keyframe the opacity for 100%. Move back in time. And keyframe the opacity to down to 0%. And let's put the D under subscribe. Now it will go out like that. How cool is that? So let's give this little animation a watch. What it looks like so far. Comes out. Boom. Boom. Click. not too shabby. I think this end of it's a little slow, but we can fix that later. Now, so this is looking pretty good, but we, we, we need to now take this subscribe and subscribed and put it behind the red shape kind of where it is revealed by the red shape. But before we do that, we're going to go ahead and make, because we've done all the keyframing we really need to do, the majority of it, we're going to make these keyframes look nice. So we're going to highlight all of our layers, click U on our keyboard, show all the keyframes, and we are going to literally highlight everything. We're going to right click all these keyframes, keyframe assistant and easy ease, which is going to make our keyframes a little smoother. Instead of that jerky motion they normally have, it'll create a smoother motion that makes it look nicer. So just like that. Kind of robotic, not too bad. Maybe this ends a little earlier. Let's take this back. Go out. Looks good to me. You can play with the timing all you want. Let's hi let's close all these down again. We and now what we need to do is make sure to subscribe and subscribe is hidden behind the red shape as it's being revealed and work on our color changes so when it clicks all the colors change. You know like the last one. So the last one, comp one, when it comes out, you got a nice elegant color change with everything. So that's also pretty easy to do. So what we need to do quickly is highlight subscribe 
and the D and right click and pre-compose. And I made a low key joke there. If you laugh at it, that's fine. <laughs> I'm kind of laughing to myself. And we'll type text for the pre-comp. Click OK. And then what we need to do is take main shape, control D to copy it, bring main shape to above text, take text, click on the text layer and go to track mat. If you don't see track mat, what you'll do is right click columns and go to modes, turn that on, which will show track mat and change this to alpha mat shape two. Now, when this actually comes out, subscribe is revealed by the red shape because it's really just the duplicate shape on top of it doing the exact same thing. But now when this gets clicked, we need the colors to change. So what we're going to do is actually take a fill effect. So effects and presets type fill should already be open from last time. And let's drag this onto our main shape. Change this red back to that kind of dull red we had before, which is totally fine with me. And what we're going to do is actually click the main shape. Um, let's find where the mouse clicker clicks. So you on our keyboard, find the mouse click. Click E on our keyboard to open up the fill. Drop that on fill, keyframe the color. And when it clicks, it's going to change to white. So let's change the color to white. Creates a new keyframe, just like that. We also need to change, do the same thing to subscribe. So we're going to drop a fill on subscribe. Well, now it's our text layer. And actually click E on our keyboard again. Drop down the fill. Let's change it back to white for the first fill. We'll keyframe the color. Go down our timeline to right here. And we'll zoom in. Click our fill color picker in the effects and effect control panel and pick this gray right here, which now it's going to be keyframed to gray. Just like that. And if you can if you can guess, we need to take the fill color of the white shape and do the same thing we did from main shape. So we can actually just grab this fill, copy it, and paste it to the white shape. Command V or Control V. And it turns red. So that's kind of weird. It starts out red and turns white. So we need to click U on our keyboard with sub count shape selected. Find the keyframes and just switch them. So switch them around so they do the opposite. They change their colors. And now we also have to keyframe the 9K thing to change its color as well. So let's drop a fill on 9K. Actually, let's let's take our our text right here, copy the fill, and then paste it to our our 9K text right here. So paste it here. We've cop so we copied that fill and pasted it to our 9K. Click E on our keyboard to see the fill, and that's actually switch the color on ourselves. It's just like that. See? So what we did in a nutshell is we just copy and pasted the fill from our original text right here that changes from white to gray. So it was it was from white to gray, and we just move the actual gray right here back so it starts out as that gray and boom that is how you make this really neat little subscribed animation for your YouTube channel now you can play around with the keyframes to make the timing a lot better for yourself or you know take it further do some other stuff but let's actually take this thing into action and use it in Premiere to see what we need to do now if you're into some other software like Final Cut or something like maybe you need to render this animation out to use it but we can use it in Premiere just like this so I have Premiere open now and it looks pretty crazy for some weird reason what the heck is this let's turn scopes off um, what we're gonna do is right click new item new or right click new item new sequence doesn't matter what it is 1080p SLR 24 frames a second click OK we're gonna find our After Effects file we just created so if you haven't saved it yet, you should probably save it now. Find that After Effects file and just drag that file into your project window. It's going to open up a dialog box and it's going to ask us to import something. So this was Comp4 originally. Um, whatever you named it, that's what you're going to select and click OK. Now you can literally just take this comp and just drag it into any timeline. Keep, exi keep existing settings if that dialog box pops open and you can just use it. 
the blue background still turned on. Let's say we wanted it under footage or something. So let's find some footage we could throw in here real fast. I've got this old movie we can throw in. Right here. We want this to be reversed. So we need to turn the blue layer off. Open up After Effects and hide your blue layer. Save your file and open up Premiere and boom, it has been, you know, it is on this subscribe thing. Let's actually bump up this thing right here. And if you can see here, We have our subscribe animation just from After Effects, what we just made. How cool is that? <laughs> and you don't have to render anything out or anything. You can just save your After Effects file. You can drop it into Premiere and use it. Um, and you can dynamically update it as well. So let's, I don't know, let's change the color of uh, main shape. Hit E on our keyboard to see our effects fill. Change this fill to, uh, or the original color to um, keyframe right there. Um, let's change it to, to blue or purple. Maybe your channel has a purple theme. Save your file. Premiere. And hey, it's it's been changed. But how cool is that? That's really awesome, right? Oh, and uh, if you don't have Premiere, but you have After Effects for some weird piratey reason, <laughs> and you still want to use this file inside of your projects, you're going to need to render it out. So what you're going to do is actually go to Composition, Add to Render Queue, and um, opens up these new options. You're going to click on the output module, click lossless, and actually change um, the mode from on video output to RGB plus alpha. Now, if you're on a PC like me, you might have to render it out as an AVI, or you may have to render it out as like a PNG sequence or something like that. Um, but if you're on a Mac, you can render it out as animation, which will be the RGB plus alpha, what you need. File size is a lot smaller than AVI but it still works. Then you can drag and drop that file into your video editing software to use over and over again. But for the, what this Premiere users just saw, yeah, it's pretty easy. You can just literally drag and drop that file, the After Effects file into your project, which is super helpful. And before we go, remember you can download this file on my website. Um, I always add a little bit of extra stuff into this kind of project file, a color controller, all kinds of neat stuff I'll make for it. Um, but other than that, guys, I am Max. Please like and subscribe, and I will catch you guys next time. Peace.